Hello and welcome to the Manifestation Podcast with Peggy McCall. Peggy is a world-renowned wealth, business, and manifestation expert, as well as the New York Times best-selling author of Your Destiny Switch. Are you ready to manifest your dreams? Tune in now. Hello, everyone. This episode of the Manifestation Podcast is taken from a live stream where Peggy gives guidance on managing emotions and how you can turn fear into faith. Enjoy. Well, what we're going to do in the next 30 minutes is I'm going to give you some guidance on how to manage your emotions, how to turn fear into faith, which is a topic that I actually had a program on many, many years ago, and really how you can tap into your emotions, which everyone has within them, so that you can create more of the outcomes, if not all the outcomes that you desire. Now, if that's something that you would love to experience, then give me a heck yeah peg or a yes, 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 or a thumbs up or something along those lines, some kind of a confirmation. That's really what you're looking for. All right. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that for you. Also, I want to ask you if you are experiencing or feel like you may be, thank you, Carmen. I appreciate that that you may be experiencing some emotional challenges right now as it relates to COVID, or it might not even relate to COVID. It may relate to something else. So what's been happening is, yay, all right, great, thank you. So what's been happening in the world is, and if you, if you think back to a number of months ago, I mean, here we are today, and it has been several months since the COVID pandemic had, has really consumed all the news channels. And I mean, it started, there was a little bit of discussion around it, and then it just started to become prevalent. And then next thing you know, we've got many countries that were in lockdown and of course went through a period of time then, and then, and then it was a little quieter and now we're back into lockdown in a number of countries. But what happens is, or what has happened is that a number of people, when they first heard about this pandemic, because it was something that none of us had ever really experienced before. I believe there's a a few folks that are over the age of 100, but very few, as you very likely know, but many of us have not ever experienced that. And I'd like to ask you, for those of you that are on with us right now, and Celine's here as well, by the way, I just want to let you guys know that Celine is here. She's on the Dynamic Destinies team. She's a very cherished member. She's here to help me. She helps me every day with bringing greater value to you. She's a beautiful soul, a beautiful person, and she's also here. And I remember Celine and I had a conversation very early in the days of the COVID, and we were discussing how fear you know, was something that, uh, that was prevalent, and it was something that we had all uh, experienced to, to some degree. But what happens is when you're feeling fear, it becomes debilitating. In other words, it's paralyzing and fear is a uh, potentially destructive state to stay in. It's not that we won't experience fear. Many people are going to experience fear when you're stretching yourself and you're really pursuing a goal that you've never accomplished before. You're very likely feeling fear. So I believe it's important to simply have that awareness of when you're feeling it and then make a decision to switch to switch over to faith. Now, I want to show you something that I bought back in the 1990s. Now, what is this? This is a four panel dimmer switch that I purchased from the hardware store. And the reason why I purchased this four panel dimmer switch from the hardware store is because back in the 90s, I had already been studying personal development for many, many years and had a really, really solid understanding of of how we are or why we are the way we are and how we can create results. And so I recognized the nature and the power of our emotions. We're all emotional beings and we all have incredible power within us, but we've got to understand ourselves and then make decisions and discipline ourselves so that we're implementing things, techniques, strategies every single day that are going to help us stay in in a very good space into in good vibration, right? Good, good, good vibration and good emotion. 
And so I went out and I grabbed or purchased, didn't grab, purchased this uh, four panel dimmer switch. And what I did was I labeled it. I labeled emotions at the top of this, of each of the switches, emotions that I would choose to focus on, for example, focus on, for example, faith, confidence, love, worthiness, you know, things like that. And I chose the emotions to focus on based on what I felt I personally needed to be believe in or enhance those particular emotional muscles. Now, we have many different emotional emotions within us. And so in my book, Your Destiny Switch, which was a New York Times bestseller, I had created something called the scale of human emotions. And what I did was I mapped out all our emotions on scales like this. And at the high end of one emotion like faith, as an example, there'd be varying degrees of faith all the way down to fear. And so if you think about if this switch was on the wall in my home and I had it up on high and turned the light on, it would illuminate the brightness in the room. But if I started to lower it and lowered it and lowered it, it would darken, right? It would decrease the light that's in the room. This is what happens with our emotions as well. So when we're feeling fear, it's like you're not seeing clearly, you know, everything sometimes becomes dark and bleak. And so it's not a creative state. It's a destructive state. Now, that's not a judgment. It's simply an observation. We need to be aware of where we are on our scales of emotions at all times. All right. At all times. And the reason is because you're attracting or repelling based on how you are feeling. And so what you want to do is you want to put yourself into positive vibrational states, expressing strong positive emotions on a consistent, consistent basis and be aware of when your energy drops down. And if your energy is dropped down, you can make a choice to move it up and you can do it like that. You can do it in an instant. And there's many different ways to do that, many different strategies, which is a big part of what I teach. And so if we're talking about, especially for this particular segment that we're doing today, when you're feeling fearful, which would be the bottom of the emotion of faith, when you're feeling fearful, obviously everything is going to be dark and bleak, etc. So what do you do in those instances? Well, number one, you create the awareness to just notice when you're in that state. Now, that's easy to do. You don't even necessarily have to go, am I in a fearful state right now or am I not? I, you know you're in a fearful state or you're not in a fearful state. It's obvious by how you're feeling. What I'm recommending is pay attention to how you are feeling. So let's say you're in this fearful state and you notice, okay, I'm in a fearful state. And then you just start to think of, okay, so what am I afraid of, right? What are you afraid of? Now, what you're afraid of is what you're giving conscious attention on, right? If you're afraid, as an example, when COVID started and people were starting to think, oh my goodness, what does this mean? What does this mean to me? You know, not only the health aspect of COVID, potentially getting COVID, potentially becoming very sick, People were also getting fearful of what does it mean to me for my income or my finances or to the world or my loved ones and, and on and on it went. So what are they doing? They're focusing on things that are not going to cause them to feel good. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to be in this bubble of uh, feeling good all the time. That's not realistic. As human beings, our emotions do go up and down. And there may be periods of time where you're feeling a little more fearful and then you've got to relax yourself. I'll give you a very, very simple example. Um, before COVID, I was flying quite often. I would fly to speaking engagements or some of my own events, etc. And I did a lot of flying for business. And I'm not really a big fan of flying. I've been flying on business or for business since I was in my early 20s. So I've been doing it a long time. I'm in my 60s now. And like I've been on airplanes where I remember one time being on a flight that had departed from Vancouver, British Columbia. I was living in Vancouver at the time, and I was flying out to do a multi-city tour in Western Canada, and the first stop was Calgary. And so I was flying from Vancouver to Calgary, and we got on board the plane. We're a little delayed taking off, so, you know, little cause for concern there, no big deal. We finally take off, 
and we're not even at the cruising altitude yet. And I look out the window and I can see one of the engines is on fire. And so the pilot comes on, he announces what's going on. Well, I don't know about you, but when I look out a window of an airplane and I see one of the engines are on fire, I'm feeling fear, right? I am all consumed in fear. And, and, you know, I remember thinking at the time, you know, I picked a bad day or a bad week to give up drinking. I'm just kidding. But anyways, I was feeling the fear. So what did I do? Well, I calmed myself down. The first thing that you'll notice when somebody becomes fearful is that they stop breathing or well, they don't completely stop breathing, but their, their breathing becomes very short and shallow. They're not breathing deeply. So one of the things that I do to really help with the fear is taking some deep breaths, <sighs> taking some deep breaths and relax. And then I start to tell myself things that are going to cause me to feel better. Now, as I'm sharing these examples in this particular story, this is what you can do as well. Same thing with when COVID started, when COVID started, and it was like an instant, what does this mean? What does this mean to the world? I remember Celine and I talking about it. I mean, there was a moment of fear here. I, I didn't really know what that meant. You know, is this because we didn't know how devastating it could be or could not be? I mean, we really didn't know. You know, I was concerned about family, concerned about I'm running a business, you know, concerned about the economy, concerned about what's going to happen, you know, next and all those things. So I noticed it right away and I just chose to shift my attention over to thoughts that feel good. Same thing in the airplane. So I'm in the airplane, I turn around, I see the engines on fire, take in some deep breaths. I'm feeling a little panicky The the pilot comes on to announce we're going to turn around and we're going back to land at Vancouver. And while this is going on, uh, as we're getting ready to go back, we had just taken off from Vancouver. So we weren't very long in the air before this engine on the plane caught on fire. And so I uh, I just started to focus on everything's fine. We're going to land safely. It's all good. We have other engines on this plane. I know they can fly the plane without all engines. And so I just started to tell myself things that would calm me down. And then as we started to approach and made a landing into the Vancouver airport, I saw fire trucks and police cars, and they're all sort of following the plane as it was landing. We landed, they got the fire out, they let us all off the plane. Um, actually, we're way out in the tarmac. They kept the plane far, far away from the terminal for obvious reasons, and then it was all fine. And... Uh, and actually, there were no more flights that evening for, for Calgary, so I ended up flying the next morning. And of course, getting on an airplane, again, after that kind of experience. This kind of thing happens with people in relationships, like people get in a relationship and they have a challenging situation, or maybe it's a really bad breakup, or people go through marriages and it just really doesn't go well. Or, you know, I've heard about people that have been abused in relationships and then what happens is they create beliefs that are, you know, in their mind justified because of their own experience, but yet it doesn't have to be that way. So for example, like would I have, what would have happened if I never got on an airplane again? I did get on an airplane the next morning. I've been on many airplanes since that event. That event occurred in the 1980s. I think it was 1988 when that actually happened. So it occurred a long, long time ago. And uh, I had another uh, very challenging experience in an airplane. Only my brother was flying the airplane. And uh, my brother, Gary, who I was very close with, and he's passed on from this earthly plane. Um, sadly, he died at a very young age. And uh, so Gary, Gary and I used to hang out together quite a bit. And one of the things that Gary did was he got his pilot's license and he used to fly little Cessna planes. And so one day, Gary invited my other brother, Bobby, and my, wait, who was it that came with us? I think it was my dad. No, my brother, Bobby, wasn't there. My dad was there, and my sister. My mom didn't want to come. So it was four of us, because it was a four-seater Cessna. And so Gary invited us to go for a flight. So we had left just north of Toronto. We we're living in Toronto at the time, and we we're flying out of the King City Airport, and we're going up to where... Uh, my grandmother's cottage used to be, and we're going to fly up to the Muskokas, 
we were going to land at the Muskoka airport and come back. Actually, we landed at the Gravenhurst airport and we came back. Beautiful day when we took off. We did all this. We're up to Gravenhurst airport, turn around to come back. Well, the weather had turned. So what had happened was it became all of a sudden uh, very um, foggy. And my brother was not trained on instrument flying. He was trained on visual flying. And so we couldn't see, we didn't know where we were. And I remember at one point we finally got low enough that we could see the ground, we could figure out where we were and we were above the highway 400 and he followed that. All of a sudden it got windy. So we're going through all this crazy weather and then the wind picked up and the plane, it's a little four seater Cessna's getting thrown all over the place. And so we're getting close to the King City Airport and we're coming in approaching the, the runway to land. All of a sudden a huge gust, the wind came up and push the wing right up almost on its tip. And I remember the tip, I don't know whether it hit the ground or didn't hit the ground, but we started bouncing. And, and I just did the only thing that I could do. And I closed my eyes and I screamed because I thought we were about to die. And I was thinking about my mom's at home. My brother is at home. There's like, they're going to lose four members of the family. I remember having that thought. It was kind of like a, a flashing thought. But anyways, Gary got control of the plane. You know, he started, started bouncing on the runway. And then my, my dad yelled to my brother, Gary, take off, take off again so that we can get control. So we took off, we accelerated, we took off and we came back in and he landed it safely. And uh, that experience, you know, again, this, this could be a situation where you have a scary experience or something happens to you and it doesn't even have to happen to you. It could, this could be something that happens to somebody else, but you build your belief systems based on that. So fear can be involved in building belief systems within you that actually prevent you from going for it, like from really pursuing your dreams or from doing things. And I've heard that time and time again from people that have, you know, had the desire to do something great or grand in their life. And they went out to do it and, you know, they either got a door slammed in their face or they were told no and maybe told no, no, no many times, or they launched their business online as an example, and it didn't go the way that they wanted. And they just packed up their bags and, you know, went and got a day job somewhere because fear of rejection was something that was preventing them. Fear of failure was something that was preventing them. And in some cases, some folks are actually afraid of success. So fear is a very real emotion for people. But, and it can be a very debilitating emotion, as I said earlier. So you've got to create strategies. And I have strategies uh, for managing fear and turn it into faith. So here's some strategies. Number one, have the awareness that it's there. Number two, make a decision that you're going to get out of the fear and you're going to switch to faith. And number three, switch. All right, so number one, you have the awareness. Number two, you make the decision. Number three, switch. So switch, what do I mean by switch? You see, if your focus, just like our wonderful dimmer switch example here, if you're feeling fearful, you are not feeling faith. If you're feeling faith, you are not feeling fear. Okay, you understand? You can't be feeling both at the same time. It's impossible. They're on the same scale. All right, they're on the same scale. So if you're down here and you're feeling fear, then you must do things that are going to move you up the scale. So what would you do to move yourself up the scale? I'm going to give you several suggestions right now. All right, several suggestions. Now, here's one. One of the suggestions is to ask yourself an empowering question. An empowering question. So what would be an empowering question? An empowering question would be something like, well, what's great about this? Okay, what's great about this? Where's the blessing? How can I use this for my advantage? How can I turn this into a positive thing? And here's one of my favorites, which is right here on my desk engraved on my little triangular device. What would you love? Or you could ask yourself, what would I love? What would I love in that a moment? Now, when you ask yourself a question, what happens is your mind will go to a place of attempting to get an answer. And when you ask yourself an empowering question, a more positive question, then you're going to get a better answer. 
So you want to ask better questions. All right. That's the, one of the first techniques. Another technique is to shift your focus away from what you're fearful and start to give your attention to something that you would love. So let's say money, which is a, uh, a fear that lots of people have. And actually, it's not money that they're afraid of. It's the lack of money that they're afraid of. So if you find that you're feeling fearful of not having enough or not having money, then you want to shift over to believing that you already have an abundance of money to do whatever you want to do. And so you could do things that you are either reading a goal card, if your goal happens to be a financial goal card, or you could do affirmations. But when you say affirmations or when you read a goal card or a demand card, my recommendation is that you do it with really positive emotion, like really good emotional states, like feeling really great about it. So it's not enough to just say, I'm so happy and grateful to be a happy and healthy multimillionaire. You got to feel it, like really feel it. Now, what are you doing in order to feel it? You're actively using your imagination. Everyone has imagination and you can certainly do it. Other things that you can do is like I use visuals, visual tools that I have. I have a vision board. I have a manifestation movie. You know, I have things like that. I have visuals that I keep around, I keep beside me, that create the visual of the desire that I have. Invest time staring at that, like getting quiet with that. That's another thing that you can do. Another very powerful thing you can do is plug in your little earbuds or your air, earphones and listen to your Power Life script. I re-recorded mine this morning and there's huge amounts of in, in energy in it and enthusiasm. And so every time I listen to it, I can't help but have a smile on your face. Also, if you are someone who has been accustomed to feeling fear on a regular basis, you could have learned that. It could be a learned behavior. Like my mother was, as they call it, a worry wart, right? What's a worry wart? Well, it's somebody who worries all the time. It's constant. So I learned that as a young age, but chose to switch it around. So anytime I'd find myself thinking about, oh, what if this is going to happen? Or what if that happens? Or what if that ha something happens to them? It's like, what is it that you want, Peggy? Like, what would you love? I would switch my thinking. That's really what you want to be doing is switching your thinking. But it's not only your thinking. The whole objective of doing this is so that you feel differently. Now, it may take a little bit for you if your emotional state is really low and dark and bleak and you're feeling that fear to get yourself up to the more powerful state of faith. It may take some time, may take some practice, but I'll tell you this. When you do these things, these practices on a regular basis, you're going to find that it will become a habit to feel the faith. It becomes habit for you to switch out of the fear into the faith. And it only becomes a habit by doing it over and over and over again. Now, I understand Celine's been sharing some little messages with me here that there are some questions that have come in. So I'm going to go to those questions right now and address them. All right. I love that question, Jack. I'm going to get to that one in a moment. And uh, yes, Patricia, I'll get to your question as well. And Tammy, we're going to start with you. Feel the faith. Yes, that's right. BBB, the lifestyle. All right. So I have a, a couple author questions for you. Should a web? Oh, okay. We're not really here to talk about author stuff, but uh, okay. We're here talking about emotions and turning fear into faith, but Okay, so let me get this question um, done. Uh, Tammy says, I have a couple author questions for you. Should a web page be created for each book title published or only create a website under your author name? Yes, so create a website under your author name and then you can add pages to it. That was a quick one, right, Tammy? All right, thanks. Okay, Patricia says, why do we sometimes get afraid of something we really want and have worked hard for? Thank you so much. You are changing my life. Thank you, Patricia. I really appreciate you and I honor you for being here. And it's a great question. Why do we sometimes get afraid of something we really want and have worked hard for? Because of the fear of loss, of not having it, of not getting it. Typically, that's what it is. And so think about this. It's so simple. You know what I love? Most about personal development, of course, here we are 41 years later, 
But you get that advantage, right? I've been studying this for 41 years, not just a little bit, extensively I've been studying it. So here's what I want to say, and I really want you to understand this and listen. It's simple. This is really, really simple. It's such common sense to a large degree. So if we are fearful of something that we really, really, really want, it's because we're not thinking about it in a creative way, in a calm way. So if we just think about something, let's say, let's say the goal is to, one of my favorite topics is to purchase a dream home. All right, let's say that's what the goal is. But there's some fear. I don't, Patricia, I don't think this is your goal, or I don't know if it is, but I just want to use an example here. So let's say the goal is to own a beautiful dream home. And you know that it's possible that you can have that, that you can do it, anyone can do it, but yet you're afraid of it for some reason. You're you're afraid maybe it's not going to work out. Maybe you're going to make a decision and then you're not going to have the money to firm up the deal or you're going to buy it and then you're not going to be able to afford it or it's not going to be what you thought it would be. It's because you're thinking of thoughts that are not in harmony with the outcome that you desire. So when you're doing that, you simply need to notice that you're doing it and then say, okay, so what thoughts and emotions, more important emotions, but the thoughts will spring forth the emotional state. So what thoughts could I give my attention to that will cause me to feel complete alignment in harmony with what I desire as if it's already here? So it could be things like, wow, well, I am so happy and grateful that this all happened perfectly, harmoniously, for the good of all concerned, that it was easy to do, that everyone in, on my team was all on board. I mean, just start to think of what thoughts would really, really create a phenomenal experience, a perfect experience. That's what you do. You give your attention there. All right. Such a great question, Patricia. Thank you. Jack is saying, how do you, how do you yourself develop thicker skin? Love Jack's question and good to see you here, Jack. I would say the answer is in three words, power life script, power life script. And if you're not familiar with what that is, you can go to powerlifescript.com, powerlifescript.com. So power life script, I'm going to explain it here for those that may not be familiar with it. Power life script is the one technique that I created many, many years ago that's made the biggest difference in my results and in how I feel consistently and in having what Jack calls a thicker skin. Why? Because a power life script is not only a tool or resource for you to build and see and imagine that you're living your dream life. It's also a powerful tool to build emotional muscles within you. So when COVID hit as an example, or when recessions happen as an example, I was not feeling any impact negatively. I knew it was going on. And with COVID, I had a moment of, oh my goodness, what does this really mean? But I also noticed that within me, I felt very, very strong, right? Very strong. Why? Because I've been listening to my Power Life script since the 90s. And I listened to it multiple times every single day. So today I re-recorded it. It's 27 minutes long. I've listened to it already multiple times today. A little bit later, I'll be taking the dogs for a walk. I'll be listening to it again. I'll listen to it again and again. And it strengthens. The reason is because when you hear something over and over and over and over again, it's going in your conscious mind, but through repetition, it's being impressed in your subconscious mind, even if it's a lie, even if in the beginning you don't believe it. But when you listen to it over and over and over and over again, you will believe it. You'll absolutely believe it. So you can use your power life script to not only see and visualize yourself now living the dream life that you'd love to live, but you can also utilize your power life script to build strong affirmations within you, strong beliefs within you like that you're always successful. And I've told the story many times of when Denny and I started to date many years ago and we're standing in my kitchen and he says to me, what happens when you're not earning money? It's like, I'm always earning money. Well, what if you're sick? I don't get sick. What if you get hit by a car? I don't get hit by a car. 
I am always earning money. It's a belief that I have about me. I believe it to be true. And you could take everything away from me. You could put me into, you could teleport me into another city and I would be earning money before the day is out because it's a belief that I have within me. Now, those beliefs didn't just magically get there. They got there from effort, from disciplining myself, from giving focus only to what I desire with the Power Life Script, this powerful tool. So thank you so much for asking that question. Oh, thank you, Martina. I just saw your message here. Love your Power Life Script, says Martina. Hey, Alicia's here as well. Good to see you as well. BBB, the MB style says, I'm always earning money. Yeah, baby. All right, good stuff. Okay, more questions to come in that are here right now. Uh, I am, I, I am DeGardo, DeGardo. I'm not sure. Sorry if I'm not saying your name properly. The question is this, can studying this subject help you to a point that you don't have to take medication? I don't know. It depends on what kind of medication. I don't know what the medication is. I am not a medical expert. I do not give medical advice, but here's what I believe. And I don't know what medication you're on, but here's what I believe. And I remember one time being at a Bob Proctor event and Bob had been asked the question. Someone was in the audience and they had been diagnosed with an incurable disease. And Bob Proctor was asked, you know, is it possible to reverse that? And he said, yes. Deepak Chopra was someone that I came to know very, very well. He would tell you the same thing. So there are many people that would say, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You can do that. I think it depends, though, on the medication. Vladdy says, is it normal to feel fear even after achieving your C-type goal? Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Well, yeah, if you have another goal, but if you've achieved the goal, it would be, it would be unusual to feel fear because you're there, right? And the way that we manifest is by already being in the emotional states of having that which we desire, all right? So that's how we manifest is by feeling it. However, if you're feeling fear, it could come from one of two places. One, you're afraid you're going to lose it or it's going to be taken away from you. So I would stop thinking that. I don't think that's what you're saying here, Vladdy, but just for the sake of everyone that's on the call, that's sometimes where people get fearful is they're afraid they're going to lose it all or, or not experience more success. And um, the other reason why you'd be feeling fear is because you've set a new goal and that scares and excites you at the same time. But let me share something with you that is one of the most valuable ideas I have ever learned. And this comes from Neville Goddard, who I've studied extensively. Neville Goddard says the following. If someone is not experiencing success, the reason is because they do not feel it naturally. What does that mean? It means that you expect to succeed. It means that you assume your success is already there because your success, everyone that's on this live event right now, or you're watching the replay is guaranteed. It's guaranteed. I want you to know that I got an email from someone today who said, so Peggy, since you tell me that my success is guaranteed, and then they went on with a, with a question, everyone's success is absolutely guaranteed. It's whether you step up and whether you do something about it and whether you claim it as your own, but your success is already available for you. If you think it, you can do it, right? If you just have the thought that you would love to do something, you can absolutely do it. You got to understand every one of you has tremendous power within you, an abundance of power that's within you to truly manifest what you want. But I'm going to tell you something. It takes discipline. And yes, it takes study. And it's something that you want to dedicate your life to, because I have found that the only way I turned my miserable life around was from doing what I'm sharing with you. Like I did the work, I invested the time, I invested the energy, and I still do to this day, because to me, it's as important as the air that I breathe. I breathe air in and out. I don't even think about that all day long. I do all kinds of goal achieving activities every single day. I don't even think about that either because I'm in the habit of doing it. And I'm always focused on getting better and better and better and better and better because you know what? We can all be better 
We can all do better. We can all, all experience better. But you got to decide, man, this is your life we're talking about. I want you to get serious about this. Serious about this. This is not trial run here. Nobody knows how much time we have. I shared with you a little while ago about my brother, Gary, who I was very close to. He left this earthly plane at a young age. He got cancer and he died. He died in. Now, I'm sure if you had to ask Gary in the prime of his life, like Gary, like, are you living your life like there might not be a tomorrow? I don't even know if he really thought about that. He was sure living a great life. That's for sure. But that's how fast life can be snapped away. Time is something that we should all respect. It's something that we don't know how much of it we have. Abundance, there's an abundance of it. There's an endless supply. I really believe that. Time, I don't know. Don't know how much time we have. That's why I'm so passionate about this. That's why I'm so passionate about these messages. That's why I'm so passionate about the work that we do as a team. Not just me. I've got Celine here, who's here. She's every day devoted to helping you as well. And she's an extraordinary being who's really committed to having you create incredible results. She's always thinking of new ideas and emailing me and saying, hey, what do you think about this idea? And always adding more and more value. And I know for her, her life is getting better and better and better. She's with her soulmate that she's attracted into her life as a result of using a power life script. Now, we've got a whole bunch more questions that are coming in here. I want to get to those as well. Our next question is from Abigail. Abigail says, would you recommend teach, teaching that which we learned from you and Bob Proctor if we want to be successful in the personal development industry? Love that question, Abigail. You know, one of the great advantages to teaching this is that the more you teach it, the more it gets embedded within you as well. So yeah, now you don't have to teach it. You could share it, like get a study partner or share it with your family, share it with your friends. You see, one of the wonderful people that I was blessed to work with was a, uh, a who was a client of mine, Neil Donald Walsh. Now, Neil Donald Walsh wrote a series of books called Conversations with God, which went on to sell millions and millions of copies of books. And one of the things I learned from Neil Donald Walsh, and it's not only Neil, there's many, many speakers, teachers that talk about this, is the following. Again, it's three words. Here's what he said. Be the source. What does that mean? It means if you want to have happiness in your life, be the source of happiness for others. Why? Because when you're being happy and you're helping other people be happy and experience happiness, you will experience happiness. If you would love to have love in your life, be the source of love. Give love. Be loving. Receive love. When you're being loving, love. be abundant. Share your abundance with the world because when you do, you're going to have abundance come back to you. So a blessing for you is to be the source of whatever you desire for other people in their lives. In May 2014, I was in Dallas, Texas. And Bob Proctor and I were going to be doing a weekend event together. Sandy Gallagher wasn't there. She was the business partner at the time, but she wasn't able to come to this particular event. Bob had asked me to teach some of the chapters out of Wallace D. Waddle's book, Science of Getting Rich. So Bob and I were heading down to the ballroom to do a mic check. Now put the microphones on and check the sound and check out the stage in the room. So we're heading down the ballroom. I'm in a suit. I have high heels on. Bob's beside me. We're heading down the ballroom and he's going like really quickly. And I, I, at one point I said, Hey, Bob, do you mind slowing down for a moment? Like I'm out of breath. Like my feet are hurting me already. And I got high heels on. He's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He says, I, I didn't realize I was walking so fast. And I, he says, I'm just so excited. And I said, what are you excited about? And he said, I'm excited about the seminar. And I said, okay, but you're delivering it. And he said, I know. But every time I deliver a seminar or a session or a webinar or whatever, I'm hearing it back in my ears. You see, Bob loves what he does so much because of the 
impression it makes on other people and how it helps other people and how he really is serving his purpose here on earth. But what he also loves about it is how much he personally gains from being in the study and in the material and sharing it with others. Okay, my next question here is uh, Carmen. Ooh, I like Carmen's question. How can I work with you? I like that question a lot. Well, the seeds planted, Carmen. What are you thinking? <laughs> Maybe reach out to me by email. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm totally open to that. All right, uh, the next question is, okay, Martina. What if I do the Power Life script daily and have the feeling it takes forever? Where do I need to adjust, Peggy? All right, great question, Martina. You need to adjust in the knowing that it's already here right now. If you're thinking it takes forever, then you're never going to attract it into your life. That is a thought that will keep your goals far away. So what would you say? I'm so happy and grateful that I'm now living this life. It's happening right now in my life because you have to imagine it as if it's happening right now before the event actually occurs. So if you're finding that you're doing things that are time related here, then I definitely would adjust that. It could be just something as simple as creating an affirmation that you include in your Power Life script that says, I know it's done. I have complete faith. I see it in my mind right now. I celebrate it. I feel the gratitude of knowing that it's already done. So part of the reason why I re-recorded my Power Life script this morning is because I wanted to add something to it. I mean, I've been doing this since the middle of the 90s, the Power Life script, so it's rare that I update it, but I do update it from time to time, and that is an example of why I would update my Power Life script if I wanted to just hone in and refine a particular thought or belief that I knew needed some work. So that's what I would do there. Next question is from Navina. What do you do when you feel there is resistance around your desire and goal? Okay, good. It's good that you notice that it's there. It means that you're not fully embracing that it's already in your life right now. So what I would suggest is I would suggest that you, Navina, do you have a Power Life script? If not, get one, record it, and listen to it multiple times a day. If I ever find that I'm feeling resistance, that means there's no alignment. It's out of alignment. And you need to be completely in alignment. So what would I do? I would do more things that create the vision and the image in my mind so I can anchor it in my heart and feel it in my tummy, feel it with all my emotional states, all right? Okay, Millionaire Mike G, what is a Power Life script? It is a detailed description. Go here, Mike G, and you'll find it. It is a detailed description of you living your life as if you already have everything that you desire right now but there's a lot to it there's a lot of details and i believe everyone should have one everyone on this planet should have a power life script and uh, be utilizing it every single day because it is life changing okay when you have a mental setback what do you do to change your mindset quickly ask yourself this question what would i love what would i love what would i love great technique and easy to do leonardo says I feel lonely and not loved, and I have the fear to become homeless. All of this started again in the last few days because of COVID. How can I improve my emotional state? Get a detailed description. Grab a pen and paper and write down how you would love to be living your life. Don't worry about the how. Don't worry about that. Don't, don't give that any attention. Just get your image. Get a focus on what it would feel like living your dream life in the kind of home that you would love and become emotionally attached to it. Write a Power Life script and record it and listen to it every single day. Okay, Hessian says, I'm facing my AL exam. I've studied for this exam so much now. I'm a little bit doubt about me. So what can I do for that? What would you recommend me to be positive right now? Talk about how you aced it, how you passed with flying colors, how you were, you know, got the top marks. Just create a vision of what you would love as far as that outcome is concerned and see it, feel it, connect to it and do it multiple times every single day. Do it all day long, every day. Okay, I have one more question. We're gonna call it a wrap for today. We normally do these calls about 30 minutes. We're about 45 into it now, but no worries. I love to give more and I love that you guys are here. I really appreciate. Oh, two more questions actually. So Monica's question, then Martina's question, then we're gonna call it a wrap. 
Okay. Uh, Monica says, I'm so grateful for you and all you do. Thank you, Monica. I really appreciate your kind words. When you are working on manifesting something, does the universe sometimes put things in front of you that aren't your specific desire? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll give you an example of that. It's kind of a, a fun question. What, what Years ago, this is many, many years ago, I had um, worked with a, a woman who was a builder and well, she physically wasn't doing the building, but she sold homes and was she was contracting a build. And I had um, done a legal binding contract with her to have a home built. And I was choosing everything for it from the hardwood floors to the granite to the marble for the fireplace and all of that. And the deal that we had, the contract that we had between the two of us was that I was um, in agreement to purchase this home. And that my home that I was in at the time was going to be sold. And so the contract became binding when my house sold or if I removed that condition. So it was a condition that I had put on the transaction. So what happened was in the time that she started to build the home, the real estate market started to increase and my house hadn't sold. But I decided I think I'm going to keep my house as an investment property and rent it out. And I'm going to firm up the deal on the home that I had purchased. And so I contacted the builder and I went to see her and I said, I'd like to remove the condition and firm up this deal. And she said, I've decided not to sell it to you. And I said, well, we have a legally binding contract. She said, well, the real estate market has gone up significantly and I believe I can get more for that house. I said, well, whether you believe you can get more or not, we have a contract legally binding where we put our pen and paper and signed it. And she said this. She said, too bad, sue me. I was stunned. Stunned. It's like, seriously? Sue me? That's your answer? And she said, too bad for you. And so I remember just being so shocked and thinking, I cannot believe this is happening. And I just thought, well, something better must be coming along. Something better must be coming along. So I went back home that evening open up my laptop. I looked for the new listings of real estate. I found this property that was on a beautiful piece of land backing onto a private golf course. And it had, had a beautiful pool. It was a large pool, gorgeous house, circular staircase. And, and it was a hell of a lot more money than what the other house was. So completely out of the price range that I was in. But I know, look at price tags. Bob taught me that, Bob Proctor. So I decided I'm going to go see it. So I called a real estate agent that had it listed and I said, I'd like to go see this home. And he said, okay, I'll meet you there tomorrow at four o'clock. So I went there, fell in love and instantly and bought that home. And I did keep my other home. I ended up renting it out. And it was at that time actually that I had met Denis and we started to date as well. So yes, sometimes the universe has a interesting way of having things unfold. So you cannot expect, we can't force the universe to make things happen. We have to allow, we have to let the universe. I've often told the story of how I purchased a home many years ago. This is when I first got divorced. My son was young and I had purchased a home and I had no money to buy a home at that time. And I heard about this draw called the dream of a lifetime. And I bought a ticket and I imagined living in that home and I didn't win it, but that's okay. I, can't, I don't tell the universe how my things are going to happen or how goals are going to manifest. I know enough about that. And so I just believe that the perfect scenario would unfold. And it did. And it ended up buying that dream of a lifetime home off the guy that won it. So it wasn't. And that's quite often it happens that way. The things don't happen the way we assume or think they're going to happen. You've got to let go and let God. You've heard that expression before. Okay, uh, one more question, and we're gonna call it a wrap for today. Thank you, Don. I really appreciate your kind words that I see here on the Insta on the yeah Instagram. Okay, so Martina says, is it better to have a short power life script minus forty five minutes, and I only have to do it, and I only have to do it once? Should I shorten it? It can be as long as you want. Uh, mine's twenty seven minutes long, and I listen to it ten times a day. So. I don't, you know, it depends. It really depends. If you want to make it shorter, make it shorter. I've attempted to make mine shorter, but to be honest, I love everything that I've been adding because I'm continually adding to it over the years. But I have clients 
that have Power Life scripts that are three and a half minutes. I have some that are eight minutes, some that are 13 minutes, some that are 28 minutes, some that are actually Martina, that's the first that I've heard that someone has a 45 minute Power Life script, but that's okay. It might be, there's a lot of detail. All right, everyone. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you again today. Such a delight to be here to serve you. I wish you all the best. Make sure you get yourself a Power Life script if you don't have one yet and start listening today because it'll absolutely change your life for the good. All right. Thank you, Celine. I really appreciate you. Yes, she's got the link on all the platforms. Isn't she the best? Let's give Celine a big round of applause as well. I really appreciate her. I love her. And so grateful that she's here to help me serve all of you. Hey, Sandra, good to see you here as well. Okay, everyone, have yourself a miraculous day. I'll see you again real soon. Thanks for tuning in to the Manifestation Podcast with Peggy McCall. Take your learning deeper by signing up for the free Morning Manifestation videos at morningmanifestation.com. And follow Peggy on all social media channels for daily updates. See you again.